Hi, my name is Trainmaster04 and today I will be taking a look at the latest operating water tower from MTH. Union Pacific 4014, do you read me? Over. Roger that. Union Pacific 4014, I read you. Over. Start up and stand by. Over. Yes sir, start up and stand by. To start off, let me give a brief history about water towers and also how do they actually work and operate. Water towers started popping up along railroad routes in the early era of steam and were used throughout and still can be and still some can be found even to this day, for example on the Cumbres and Toltec as well as the Durango and Silverton scenic railroads. Now the purpose for these water towers is very simple. One, to actually hold thousands of gallons of water and two, to be able to refill any steam locomotives that are in need to top up their water reservoirs in their tenders. So eventually railroads start to figure out that water tender or water towers can actually be placed at specific areas along the route to where if a locomotive is in need of water, it can stop at these at one of these specific locations and refuel. Now, eventually, these water stops were eventually called water stations, and eventually this played a big part in Western expansion due to the fact that these water stations had great locations, and also trains periodically stopped at these locations. As mentioned earlier, water towers can hold up to over a thousand gallons of water at a time, but you may be wondering, how does this actually work? How does it actually empty and refill itself over time as the tank is emptied? Well, let me actually take a minute and explain how this works. So, how does a water tower actually work? Well, first you need water to be in the water tank itself. Now, how does that actually happen? Well, a few ways that a water tower can actually get water, or one of the most popular ways, is by using a windmill which uses wind energy to then pump water from a water source into the tank reservoir. Once the tank is filled, a spout then can be lowered to the awaiting steam locomotive and a valve can then be opened. Once the valve is open, gravity takes effect onto the water and makes the water flow through the pipes inside and then out through the, uh, through the spout into the steam locomotive's tender. Once done, the valve can then be closed, forcing the water to stop flowing, and then a weight can be used to help the spout then be raised up. Now that you have a better understanding on what a water tower is, as well as how it works, let me actually get into the statistics on the model itself. This model was recently cataloged in the 2017 Ready to Run catalog and started showing up at doorsteps around September of 2019. Under the hood, this model has the Protosound 3.0 sound system and also has a DC can motor to raise and lower the spout. It, for the measurements, this water tower stands a roughly a total height of 10 inches and the base has a rough diameter of 7.5 inches. Finally, before I actually move on and show you all of the separately applied and molded in detailing on this model, let me actually take a minute and tell you a bit of the few things that are actually included with this model, which are crucial to actually operating this model. To start off, MTH included a set of wires. Now, these wires are, in, are crucial to actually operate this model because they are actually the power wires that you connect your water tower straight to the transformer and then be able to put power to the water tower itself. Now also included with the water tower is a little button assembly, which I'll show you right now. So as you can see, it's just a simple little button with a little red button in the middle and two little screws on the outside. Now these two screws actually connect to two more wires that can be found again on the underneath of the water tower base, which I'll show you and talk to you about it later on in the video. Now you may be wondering what does the button actually do? Well when the water tower has power put to it 
the button itself is an activating button to actually activate the sound features and the spout moving up and down and doing its full sequence, which lasts for a few seconds and then resets and stops. Now that you have a better understanding on what this model has to offer, let me actually take a closer look and show you all of the molded in and separately applied detailing on this model. Taking a look at the base of the water tower, you can see that there is some molded in detailing in the form of rocks and concrete formations, as well as on top of it, the supports for the piers, which again are molded into the base. Looking on top of the piers, you can see the beginning of the wooden infrastructure that holds up the tank itself. And then in the middle, there is a rectangular structure, which if this was the real thing, holds the water pump pipes. And, but in this case, it holds the speaker as well as the wires that lead into the water tank. Looking at the front of the water tower, the first thing that really strikes to me is the big black spout that is located right here. Now this spout is actually made out of die cast metal and is made out of two halves, meaning that one half is on this side and the other half made on this side and are joined together in a seamless fashion. Now on the spout itself, you can see that there is some chains, which again are separately applied, connected to the spout in which in this case, this chain itself represents as the pulling chain to pull the spout down when a steam locomotive is needed to be serviced. Right next to it, you can see that there's another chain, which again is separately applied, which leads up to the roof, and we'll get a look, better look at that later on in this video. Now, do take note that when you actually get take this model out of the box, these chains will not be neatly uh, tucked away to this one little corner. Instead, they will actually be unhooked. For example, here's one of the chains unhooked. This is due to it making sure that it wouldn't break off and get loose inside the box. But thankfully, MTH included a little plastic hook to easily take the one loop end of the chain and just hook it back onto the water tower as so. Still looking at the front, but a better angle towards the side, Again, you can see here is the spout, but connected to the spout, there is yet another chain. Now this chain may not seem a lot, but actually at the other end, there is a die cast metal counterweight. Now this counterweight is actually prototypical because on real water towers, to help crew members actually get the heavy water spout back up into its upright position, Counterweights were used to actually counteract the weight of the water spout itself and make it much easier on the crew members. Looking past the counterweight, you again can see the chaining, but also the outer tank wall of the water tower itself. Now, the walls themselves actually are ribbed with separately applied metal ribbing, but the walls themselves are molded in plastic with simulated wood grooves in between. Looking towards the left, here is that measuring rod that I was telling you about when I was giving a bit of history as well as how water towers work. And as you can see, it has the measurements of one through 10. And right here is actually the counterweight that actually would go up and down to measure the water level inside the water reservoir. Now, again, this is separately applied with a separately applied counterweight to the end of the chain, but do take note that the chain and the counterweight do not raise and lower when the water tower is in operation, but instead this is just a static separately applied piece. Looking towards the left, again you can see the measuring device right here, as well as a separately applied ladder, which has molded in detailing in the form of four bolts, two here and two here, as well as a set of rungs which lead towards the top of the water tower. Also behind the ladder, again, you can see that the metal bands continue to go around the side wall of the water tank. Looking towards the left of the ladder, you can see that the metal bands actually come and join together at this point and are actually held together by screws and nuts. 
and actually produce a bit of a stair step effect when they come and join together. And finally, here we are again back towards the front. And again, you can see that the continuation of the bands actually does go around in a 360 degree radius around this, around the tank part of the water tower. Finally, looking at the roof of the model, you can see that there is still a whole lot more molded in detailing on top of it. For example, starting right here and again all over, you can see that the beams in between the molded in shingles is some wood grooving and again shingle detailing right in the middle. Looking towards the left you can see here's the top part of the ladder which we saw earlier as well as some more steps right here and a hatch that yet does not open but is representing as a hatch to access the inside of the water reservoir itself. Now speaking of water reservoir kind of stuff, right here towards the right is a separately applied piece which is basically a lever but at this end you can see that here is a chain which if it looks familiar it should because that's actually the chain we looked at when we were at the front of the model and this is this piece actually represents the mechanism that actually pulls the valve open inside of the model if this was the real deal to allow water to flow through the pipes down below and out through the spout to fill a locomotive tender. Now before I actually put this model back in its spot and actually show you what this model can do when power is put to it, let me actually show you the underside of the base. So let me actually just tilt it over onto its side and right away if you can see there is a set of two black wires. Now these two black wires are actually the same two black wires that I was telling you about that actually hook up to the button that I showed you earlier. Now these two wires again are the two wires that hook up to the button and that button is what sends a signal through these wires to actually turn on the model itself and let it, and let it do its thing. Above these two wires you can see that there are these two metal clips. Now these two metal clips are the same metal clips or wire clips that I was telling you about that the two red and black wires actually connect to to actually get this building some power. Now if you haven't read your instruction manual on this model, which I suggest highly doing on any MTH or Lionel model, you can see, if you, or if you can see, there are two wires soldered to both of these brackets one black one on the left and a red one on the right. Now this should be an obvious clue to anybody who has this model or is wanting to get one of these models is that this is meant for the ground wire or black wire and this is for the hot wire or the red wire. Now that you've seen and heard all of the features that this model has to offer, let me actually put this model back in its spot on my layout and actually turn it on and pull steam locomotive's tender underneath the spout and show you what it can do. Now that I've actually got the water tower back in its spot on my layout, let me actually show you what it looks like without a locomotive pulled underneath the water spout. And without further ado, let me push the button and show you what it can do. Okay, copper off. seen what it can do without a locomotive, let me actually pull up a Lionel Legacy locomotive from my collection around the curve and park its tender right underneath the spout and then let it go through its sequence.
take on some water. Okay, here we go. It's about time for me to end this video, but before I do, let me actually answer the two questions on how much does one of these water towers actually cost, and also, what is my personal opinion about this product? Well, to start off, the original MSRP price from MTH is right at $140, but you may be able to actually scratch that price off by going to trainworld.com, in which I will actually leave a link in the description as well as the product number so that it'd be easier for you to find one of these products. Now that you know what, how much one of these water towers actually cost and where you can possibly buy one of these water towers, let me actually answer the other question on what is my personal opinion about this product? Well, in short, I'm so happy that I was able to actually get one of these wonderful water towers. It is just another product or example, I should say, from MTH that shows that they can produce a wonderful product, but it still not break the bank. For example, this model has a phenomenal amount of separately applied detailing, as well as great detailing that is still molded in. For example, the metal bands around the model, I would have expected to have been molded in and just painted plastic. But no, instead it's actually metal separately applied bits that are actually literally wrapped around the tank on this water tower. Also, to add even to a greater factor on this product is the sound system as well as the spout lowering and raising when the, when the model is in operation. That is just a cool feature that would be a wow factor on anybody's layout. I know it surely is to mine when I first got it and set it out on my layout and I showed everybody to everybody it and everybody was like, oh neat, because instead of looking at my other locomotives with all the smoke features, they were just looking towards this simple little water tower that is just making some noise and doing some action. Now, if you're actually a serious modder, what, modeler watching this video, let me actually say that this is a still a wonderful product for your field. Now, you may say that, yes, this is a Rail King product, but still, it is a great product because it doesn't feel like it's a toy. Instead, it actually feels like a precision model. So, me being a moderate, seriously, uh, serious modder, modeler, <laughs> I would say that this would actually fit on anybody's layout, scale or not scale, because it has both that moderate feel of toy fun with the sound system and so forth, but it still has that realistic look of a prototypical water tower. So if you're actually a person that is just wanting to have a toy layout, then I would suggest either get, to get this water tower if you want something that has a lot of action for a good price. But if you're a serious modeler like me, I would suggest again to actually get this product because it's just a great product again from MTH. Well, it's time for me to wrap up this video, but before you go, please press the like button before you leave and also the subscribe button. This lets me know that you actually enjoy watching these videos and that you are not bored of them keeping on coming. Also, if you press that subscribe button, it will also let you not miss another future video that I produce. Also, finally, please leave a comment in the comments section if you have any questions 
or if you have any suggestions leading on to any new products that you would like for me to review in the near future. But anyway, my name is Trainmaster04 and I'll be seeing you next time.